hopefully with all of our technical uh, difficulties today, you know what I mean, we uh, actually get an episode out, you know what yeah, I mean? That'd be nice. Unlike last week when we had even more technical difficulties, and uh, and we're trying to uh, Zordon you in, you know what I mean? Zordon. You know what I mean? Like have you as a... You know, Zoom from last week, which didn't work, but that's all right. You know what I mean? The hey, technology you know. just didn't work. That's right. You know. I'm but gonna... now I'm back. Yes, Adam is back. Yeah. He is back. Very, very happy <laughs> that he is back. <laughs> yes. Yes. Excellent. And uh, you know, glad to be but... back, guys. Absolutely. I missed you from sunny, lukewarm, kind of cool <laughs> Florida. <laughs> I guess lukewarm kind of cool Florida. Yeah, yeah what it was wasn't. That? It definitely wasn't warm. I'll wasn't tell you that like much. balmy beaches and uh, no, you know, no. And, uh, it was like mid, low to mid fifties all week mm. and dipped into the thirties at night. It was weird. Oh my word! You don't. It, was, you it don't felt like of, Connecticut in like yeah. October. Yeah, <laughs> it you know, was well, weird. it's like you don't think about like Florida getting down to thirty degrees. You know, like yeah. I, you always think of it like yeah. 70, 80, You know what I mean? Like. You know, you know, it went know. down there. Adam. A warm, moist wind. Yeah, mo- <laughs> moist. <laughs> you know, moist. You, 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 you know you, that kind of wind where you know that kind of. Wind. Sorry, Matt, I interrupted yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Producer no, no, Matt, no, everyone. Yes, yes, see, yeah. You bring up the uh, yeah, bring up the Matt cam here. Producer for a Matt. Second. You ever, you ever, yeah. On those hot days, you ever have those winds? Oh, there he is. Or oh, those breezes go. where the breeze isn't like comforting at all. It's just like hot air blowing on you yeah 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 that's it's that's like, what florida breeze uh, is like yeah no thanks no yeah, no I'm not a, not a, not a huge fan yeah. you yeah. know so uh, it was uh, i'm glad to be back though glad yes, to be back yes well we're glad to have you back brother yeah, man. amen you we, know, didn't, but... we didn't have an episode last week and i missed you guys i know did you see did you I see the you. Uh, <sighs> did you see the uh the uh ed mcmahon uh crying meme that i put up you know what i mean because we couldn't re- okay or... hold on wait yeah. a minute <laughs> hold on like... wait 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 wait, wait. Ed McMahon. Was it? Uh, no, wait. Ed McMahon. It's Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon. <laughs> I said Ed. Who's Ed McMahon? I haven't had my coffee this morning, and I've you had know. so I've been I've been I've been focused on getting the stupid camera to work. Ed you know. <laughs> yes, Ed McMahon was the uh, the guy from Johnny Carson. That's right. Never... <laughs> yes, you are correct, sir. Yes. <laughs> yeah. ah, that's right. You know Vince McMahon's uncle. Yeah, yeah Vince McMahon's <laughs> uncle. That's right. <laughs> Ed Mc, <laughs> you know WWE Chairman Ed, yes, Ed McMahon. Yeah, I know. There's there's probably oh, some of our viewers that don't wow. even know who Ed McMahon is. No, they probably don't even know. And uh, you know, and well, maybe, you know, yeah. You know what? I think uh, on that note, yes. kick it to the intro, yes, man. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> Delicious radio. Yes. Weren't we supposed to have like a? Uh, we, we wanted to have like a singing lyrics, yes. lyrics to that, you know, at yes. some point. People got to send them. Yes. in. Yes. Uh, <laughs> send in uh, their yes. Yes, you are correct, sir. Did you? Did you? Do you have any new lyrics? <laughs> I don't, but I'm, yeah, I'm hopefully our viewers will uh, send some in hmm. so we can right. build build one. Mm. Three guys who love the word of God. Gospelicious radio. <laughs> boop, boop. Yes. <laughs> boop. Got the boop. Got the boop. You know, but, yes. uh, but well, welcome. We are, yes. Well, yes. Welcome, welcome. I know. Hello. You know. Hello. D- welcome to Gospelicious Radio, episode 74. Seven four. That's right. I'm your Quattro. host. I'm your host, Adam Miner. And with me, as always, is my brother from another mother. Mm-hmm. But my brother in Christ, yes. most importantly. My friend, my pastor, co-host, the Reverend Timothy R. Howard Jr. Giddy up, buddy. You get, you get the two. You get <laughs> yeah. the two. Uh, what, what do you call what these? They, uh, Mario hands. Mario. <laughs> Mario. Mario hands. Mario yes, hands. that's a good way to put it. It's, yes, it's the very good. It's the very good. It's very good. Very good. Yes. Mm, chef's kiss. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and we're canceled. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And not only that, we've been away for a week. We're, yes. We're, we're back. We're back after a one-week hiatus. Yes. Uh, Producer Matt's in the house. Producer yes. Matt, how are you doing? Yes, hey, howdy, Producer howdy. Matt. Yes, I am doing good. Yeah. We need continuous to... round. Yes, continuous round of applause for uh, Producer Matt. And yes. I'm going to go just a little bit longer. Yeah. Because I'm getting into that awkward 
applause. Yes. And I'm <laughs> done. Okay. Yeah, done. Done. There yeah. Well, he does yeah, deserve it. He does. Yeah. yeah, he does. See how I went just a little, a little too long here. Do, 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 do you appreciate it? I, I don't know how to feel about this right. Now. <laughs> I do, but do you feel attacked? Just a little. Okay. Just, just a little. A, just sh- a little. Just a little. You should. That was intentional. Yeah. Um, you know, you snowflake. You know. <laughs> So, I'm calling uh, CNN. Uh, yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so did you guys, I mean, honestly, t- g- give me the honest truth, okay? Yeah. I want the honest. You guys know I'm an honest guy. I try yeah, to be, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try not to be a liar. No, absolutely. You know, Cheat. No. Yeah. Um, scoundrel. A scoundrel. Scoundrel. You rapscallion. Rapscallion. Um, I, sh- I share my thoughts honestly. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and love you both. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that sounded Feel- weird. Feelings are mutual. Yep. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Amen, uh, brother. Did you did you really miss me though? Oh, I very yes. much did. Very, very much did. Absolutely. I want to go to Florida with you. Yeah. Well, but you know, after hearing the weather, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, you can stay yeah. up here. Yeah. Although, although, it, did it, you like hide in the corner and like just kind of rock back and forth? Yes. Hug, yes. Like, just I, like you know, hugging single, your knees, t- single yes. tear coming down yeah. my cheek. In fetal position. You know. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> just you know, weeping. crying on my pillow at night. <laughs> All right. You can stop. You can stop. Yeah. Okay. Never gonna okay. dance again. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's amazing. Well, yeah. I'm gonna pretend that you're telling the truth. Yes, and, uh, we did miss you, brother. Yeah. We absolutely we did. did. Yes, and uh, did. and 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 again, you know, like I said, we uh, we we did we did try because we were gonna try some new technology, but technology has not been the friend of Gospelicious Radio. No. Uh, lately, we need to work on that. Mm, um, but mm. what we're hoping is is uh, to be able to get something where because well, the, the whole thing was gonna be a trial run yes. with him in Florida, I know. so that we could do some. Uh, zoomy, 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 with some uh, other, uh, you know, guests and whatnot. But we'll have we'll have opportunity for that. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there, we'll get we'll there get eventually. There. I know it was. Someday. We had a plan. Yeah. We had some, yeah. Matt, t- today, Matt's job is just drop in random singing at different <laughs> oh, points. In the this is not just the amen chair. This is the sound effects chair. The sound effects chair. That's All right. All provided by me. Yes. L- little did you know, guys, that uh, Matt is a relative of uh, what's that guy's name from Police Academy? Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Winslow. Something yeah. Winslow. Carl. Carl Winslow. Car- Carl Winslow. <laughs> Carl, Win- Carl, Carl, Win- Carl Winslow was from Family Matters. <laughs> and again, we are canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Winslow. Carl Winslow. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a topic of discussion. That's Who's your? Yeah, you know. That's... Okay, Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon and Carl, and Carl Winslow. We're, we're we're dating ourselves again. Wow. You know? Yeah, you can tell we grew up in the '90s. TGIF Friday, mm-hmm. you know, Family Matters and uh, oh. Full House, and yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, Carl Winslow. Yeah, <laughs> the guy that played Carl Winslow was in a lot of movies, yeah, and he oh. was he was in Die Hard, wasn't yep. he? Yeah, yep. he was in Die Hard. He played a cop. Yes. He was in Ghostbusters. Did you yes, know that? I did. Yeah, he was the one that let the oh. Ghostbusters out of uh, out of prison. There, wow. yeah. I that's yeah. <laughs> Carl Winslow. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. So yeah. we can look forward to. Uh, <laughs> producer Matt uh, incorrectly identifying celebrities as we yes. move forward. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you can tell that we're. Uh, yeah, Carl Winslow. His, his name is his, Carl, his name is actually. I just looked it up. It's uh, it was Michael Winslow. Michael, Michael Winslow. Winslow. Yeah, yes. Enough. Our apologies to the great Michael Winslow <laughs> for confusing you with the <laughs> fictional Carl Winslow. Who? Uh, let me see. You should be proud. You should be proud to be mistaken. For yeah. That. Yeah, Carl it's Winslow. Carl Winslow, and his name the, 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 is uh, his name was oh. actually Reginald Vell Johnson right. was was his name Reginald yep. Vell Johnson. Oh. Yes, he's still around. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. You know, he is. You know, uh, yeah. This might be a d- discussion Classic for Carl Winslow. yeah I'm Carl sorry. Winslow. It just made me giggle so much. <laughs> Oh, I'm like crying. Yeah. I'm crying over I, I loved Family Matters when I was oh. a kid. That was one of my favorite TGIF shows. That was a great uh, yeah, show. Yeah, it was a great show. See, and, I, I yeah. think I think with a guy like Carl Winslow, uh, yeah. this is a rabbit trail for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you were to like make a Mount Rush, yeah. short for Mount Rushmore, obviously. Yeah, of course. Uh, a Mount Rushmore of the best fictional TV dads. Oh yeah, he would be I right mean, there. I mean, Carl Winslow would be on there, right? Oh, he's mm. the uh, George Washington. He would be the. I believe he would be the. Right, would he be right number there? one? I think he would be George. I think he's he, up there. It's, it's right there between him Either. and Danny Tanner. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, Danny yeah. Tanner would be yeah, one. Yeah, yep. yep. Um, um, what was the? What was Uncle Uncle Phil from uh, Fresh Prince? 
You know? Yeah, he, technically he can, he's yeah. that father figure. Father figure, right? I think you that know? counts. Yeah. I think that counts. Yeah. If you were to word it as in like father right. figures, Uncle Phil would definitely be. Yeah, there. he would definitely be up he there. Was, yeah, he was, he was a great yeah, dad. That was it. Was there was that one episode? Do you remember the episode of Fresh Prince where? Uh, I know where you're going. The 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 when they were playing pool. Do you remember that one? Oh, I don't no, know no. where you're going. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Well, there was that one episode where, with the, the highly emotional, where yeah. you know, where his, where his real dad came me, in. Man? Why don't he want me, man? And he gave him a big yeah. hug. That was like a classic Fresh Prince yeah. moment. But the, yeah. uh, but then there was the other one. One of my favorite scenes was when uh, Will Smith gets uh, he gets in trouble with you know betting on playing pool with a bunch of you oh, know, gang and Uncle bangers. Phil rescues him. And, yeah. and, and Uncle Phil pretends like he doesn't know what he's doing and like keeps up in the game. And then all of a sudden he like takes his coat off and he's like. And he, and he had a name. For, he had a, he even brought his own pool stick. And he's like, "All right, you know who, who was who was his butler? What was the butler's name? Um, oh, yeah. Not the butler. The uh, why don't I know this? I man. loved that show. Yeah, yeah. It's not I, Jeeves. It's uh, yeah. I gotta look. I gotta look this up. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're uh, this is this is great yeah. podcast content right here. <laughs> this is yeah. Uh, Fresh Prince Butler. Yeah. There we Je- go. Jeffrey. Jeffrey, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Close that's right. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> on Google. <laughs> on Google, they list him as his last name being Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Butler. <laughs> Jeffrey Butler. That was what he was, yes. You know, oh, and, that's uh, funny. Nah, that but, can't uh, be his last name, is yeah. it? Yeah. I, I don't know. Let me see here. Yeah. It is. It is. It's Jeffrey Butler. Jeffrey Butler. <laughs> he was the Butler. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, his last uh, name was his job. Yes, it was. That'd he be was, like your, he was a good character being, too. Yeah. He Timothy was good. Pastor. Yes, Timothy Pastor. You, you know, you know, I, I, I was clicking around on. Uh, That's funny. Uh, you know, because again, you know, church nerd stuff, and I, and I happened upon. Um, I was on uh, sermon audio or something like that, and I came upon a pastor whose last name was. And please, I'm not making fun of you this today, but but we his, are kind of, but kind of, but his last Sorry. name was Drinkwater. Hmm. That was his name. Have you ever met anybody with the last name Drinkwater? You know? No. No. Yeah. No. You know, I was like, that was that was it kind of a cool a, last name. Yeah. And right? again, yeah. again, I'm not being racist, but it was more of an observation that has yeah, sort yeah. of like a Native American kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Drinkwater. You know, yeah, it's it like, does. You know, runs with yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, runs with wolves. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no. Nah, but yeah, it was that kind of vibe. Was, is, of was he like a, a Native American guy? No, he was white as me. You know what I mean? So yeah, no. But fair enough. I know. But uh, but anyways, well, I, your name's Howard, huh? Yeah, I know. Ha ha. Ha Your name's Howard. <laughs> you got some Beavis and Butthead. Your name's Howard. No, wow. no. There was yeah yeah. Ha ha. Mm-hmm. All right, so mm. all right, so if we're if yes. we're doing because Mount Rushmore, yeah. When when people do Mount Rushmores, yeah, it's usually like four, but in no particular order, right? right There's right. no ranking to the Mount Rushmore. No, no, no. It's so just you, the four faces right, on the right. Mount Rushmore. So would it be? Would it be Carl Winslow? I think definitely Carl Winslow. Would it be Uncle Phil? Mm-hmm. Uncle Phil is definitely on there. Yes, father figure. Would it be Danny Tanner? Danny Tanner, I think, mm-hmm. is definitely on there as well. We've already got three of the four. There's so three many of the more. Four. I know, Tim but Allen. I mean, like, Tim Allen. you got Tim Allen from, from Tim, uh, Taylor? Tim Taylor. Tim Taylor, yeah. yeah. Tim Taylor, ooh, you know, was there. Although, ooh. But what about uh, good father? But yeah, but yeah, about but kind of a doof. About yeah, Prince, what about Principal Sweeney? Uh, or um, from boy, I'm not, was it was it was that his right? name? I it's Feeny. It, Feeny. It's Feeny. Sweet. I don't know. <laughs> you can I, tell that we do this podcast yes, early morning. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Three. Yes. <laughs> Principal Sweeney. <laughs> Close enough. Close Sweeney. Enough. Feeny. It's Feeny. Feeny. You know. And, Feeny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but oh, it's funny on Boy Meets Feeny. World. You don't. You don't really remember the father. I don't remember the father's name. Sure. Um, sure. You know, Feeny, Feeny was like the old, like wise. wise Sage, sage, right? Yeah, yeah but yeah. kind of a father figure, though. He was, he, yeah. was, he was, definitely. I mean, Feeny. Mm. What about Feeny? Was a legend. That dude to, is still alive. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I had to yeah. look up. Uh, he's like 144. Yeah, I know he's old. He's, he's uh, old. Yeah. Good what, for did, him. Wasn't he God at the Comic Con at one point? Yeah, he yeah was. wasn't he there? He was like I, wheeling around in his wheelchair. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. He, they they, they mm. propped him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like the time that uh, it was just before he passed away. Was uh, the guy that lived local here uh, that played Big Bird? Um, uh, 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 Carol uh, Spinney. Carol yep. Spinney. Yeah, he was there. You know what I mean? Remember we? Yep. Uh, or as Matt would want to call him, Carol Finney. Carol probably. Finney. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I'd get it wrong. Yeah, Jim Hansen. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was the guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
I'll get, it, I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> Jim, Jim Spanson. <laughs> yes, yes, Jim Spanson. <laughs> it's that guy. The, the guy that uh, had uh, Her- Hermit the Frog. Guys, you know? <laughs> this, is yes. not, this is not the podcast you want to come to <laughs> right. when you want correct That's information. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Now let's Fake talk about news. the Bible. Fake <laughs> news. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> let's talk about the Bible. Yeah, we're going to talk about the Bible. Fakest kind of news we're, ever. We're not going to yeah. talk. Done, no. done with... Uh, done with Media. Yes, but yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you know, again, just uh, you know, the little transition. What do we call it? The transition. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's the, the uh, 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 what do I? I, the, I, segue. I the segue. The segue. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, you're going from, uh, you know, well, this I just is a horrible I just, segue. Wow. This is the worst segue <laughs> ever. I, I, you, you shouldn't have to mention the segue. I know. Yeah. It, yeah. Should, it should be smooth. Yeah. You know, there, smooth. there's there's a uh, a popular sound effect that happens when something wah, fails. Wah. It's. <laughs> Wah. Like a duck quack. <laughs> 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 we should just play like The Price is Right and end it right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 really need it. We gotta get a soundboard. Or, or no, no. What's what, what? What was the sound effect for The Price is Right when when they lost? <laughs> 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 That's right. You know, uh, the, we're uh, all gonna be Michael Winslow today. I got it right yeah. this time. Got it right. Uh, <laughs> we're all gonna be Carl Winslow today. Yes. We're all gonna be great dads. Yes. yes. Here, hang on a second. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hang on a second. Hang on. Where is it? Hang on. Let's see if I can get it. Hang on. Nice. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yep. Nice. <There> go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one way it. to do it. Yeah. That's <laughs> We gotta. Right. We, we were gonna up, update our. Yeah, uh, we gotta, our, our, it, we, we gotta make sure that we build up that so that we can get it in the. In All the right. Regular. Enough of this tomfoolery. Yes. Yes. What's the topic for today, brother? We what are. Is, yes. We are just a couple of fools. A few fools, I should say. Yeah. A couple is two. A few is three or more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're a few fools, just acting silly. But yep. we where do two, have where two or three fools are gathered together. There is tomfoolery in the midst. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Where two or three fools are gathered, there are things going on. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are uh, obviously a Bible and theology podcast. Yes. And we like to have fun, though. It's we okay. Do. Um, today, though, uh, we want to talk about preaching. Mm. Uh, you are a preacher. Yes. And uh, it's... Um, it's, it's it's very interesting to to talk about that because um, there are so many different approaches to it, um, and so I wanted to kind of get into almost I, I guess preaching theory in a way, right? Um, the the philosophy behind why you preach the way you do, mm. uh, what are the what are the best ways to do it, uh, your approach, and so I guess to start off. Uh, you know, this is a good time to kind of, you know, we're talking about the beginning of the year. Right, and, right. Um, bringing things into focus. Um, as a, you, You've you been preaching. How long you been, have you been uh, preaching from God's Word? Oh, boy. Uh, as far as full-time ministry is concerned, uh, this is my 15th year um, preaching. I At, at least... W- w- not necessarily doesn't have to be as a senior not pastor. Ev- not every single. I mean, because yeah. again, I was a youth pastor and associate. But um, but in and you, total, were, you were called on to preach then too, right? So, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I preached way before then too. Mm-hmm. I think uh, probably the first time I ever preached was when I was fourteen or fifteen years old um, okay. down at uh, down at my home church there, and um, was given an opportunity to preach, which was which was good. And um, matter of fact, I, at my home church, I had preached there fairly recently, and. Um, it was uh, New Year's Eve. You, 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 and uh, and both of you guys were there. You know, yeah. for at yeah. my home church there in East Windsor, and somebody reminded me that uh, that they have a recording of me on New Year's Eve because I remember this was years ago. Me and a couple other guys who, because uh, they did a much longer service that night, uh, we all shared something from God's Word, and so apparently they have it on video somewhere. And I told them I did not want to see it. Um, because, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't very know. much want to see this. <laughs> Not at all. We, and, we, uh, yeah, oh yeah, we, we can definitely yeah, make, yeah, that make that happen with bonus my, uh, content. Yes. Yeah, bonus okay. content, gospelicious. But yeah, so so in total, probably. And then of course, I preached through um, Bible college, um, and uh, you know, here and there, uh, you know, I mean, obviously took preaching classes and uh would uh preach and teach in uh in the church that I was a part of down there in Pennsylvania but so yeah I've been doing it for a long time yeah so um we call i guess this study or the approach to preaching that we call it homiletics correct right um so it's a that's i guess one of our did we talk about that during our 10 dollar theology words pod 
I think I think it, I mean, maybe it may have come up right homiletics. Yeah, um, it's the kind of studying the I guess the pr- the preparation the delivery of, right. of sermons right. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of want to dig into that a little bit today. Um, there are different approaches to preaching. There are. Um, you know, we think of uh, those uh, topical style sermons. Right. Um, we have what's called expositional um, preaching. Right. Where you kind of go verse by verse by verse. Um, what other are, are – uh, that's the well, very much the basic review, but what what other details are there as far as the approach? Like what, well, what you, other you, – you hit on both of the two main ones, um, yeah. you know, in terms of um, the differences between the two. You have – you have uh, expository preaching, which again is is a verse by verse exposition, exposing the text of Scripture with the purpose and the intention is to bring out what the original intent of the Bible was in the particular context, historical, grammatical, linguistic. Um, that's your hermeneutic, so to speak. Again, another you know ten dollar yeah. theology word. In other words, your presupposition. You know what I mean before you go into it. Whereas topical preaching on framework. Is, yeah, yeah, your framework. Yeah. Whereas topical preaching is is that you go to the text with an uh with a preconceived notion. You you go to the text wanting with, looking for things to make your point. To make your particular point, yeah. exactly. You know what I mean? So like I look for texts that uh if I want to teach on the love of God or if I want to teach on um the you know, uh, the grace of God. I, I pick particular p- texts of Scripture, and instead of just expounding, exposing one text, yeah. I'm in a multitude of texts. Now, you can get into other um, other forms of preaching that are kind of, I would consider them kind of sub-tier points. You have textual preaching, um, you know, which is just the idea of uh, it's a part of the text, but it's kind of like a mixed breed of, of, uh, of expository and topical because you are going, it's technically topical, but but you're going into it, yes, exposing the text of Scripture. It's textual. You're taking your point from the text, but you're utilizing that uh, to make a bigger point. And I think a lot of guys kind of fall somewhere in that perspective. Um, you know, I you also have what I like to call, and it's not as highly talked about, um, is... Uh, uh, oh, there's my sound effects on my thing here. Hey. Uh, yeah, ding. Um, you have um, what I like to call pastoral preaching, which I think is uh, a form of preaching that I think is uh, oftentimes ignored. Um, Explain that. What does that mean? Pastoral preaching, of course, pastor is the idea of shepherding your flock. and um, So preaching about what you think they need at the time? Exactly. Yeah. And okay. I think that that's a key key thing that if you're going to be a pastor that you need to be aware of the needs of your flock at that particular time, mm-hmm. especially if you're of kind of my elk, which is, again, I think that the most trusted and probably healthiest form of preaching is expository preaching. But the, but the yeah. danger that you get into is that with expository preaching is, yeah, you could be going through a book of Scripture, you could be going through yeah. Ephesians, and or a Revelation, in my case, I'm going through Revelation right now, and something happens in the life of your church, and you, and I've sat under men who, who do this. And just they just trudge through. They just trudge through. It's like, you know, yeah. it, you know or, or like, for instance, okay, textual preaching, or topical even. Right. There's nothing necessarily wrong with these forms of preaching, but like, okay, it gets to be Christmas time, and I've, you know, I've known men who will just, you know, eh, I'm not going to teach on Luke 2. I'm just going to, on Christmas Sunday, I'm just going to keep on my expository uh, sermon. And it's like, people are like, well, you know, it's Christmas time. You know what I mean? Maybe you should, or Easter, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Or some of these other things. And there's Mm -hmm. arguments against it, but, but those are kind of the basic basics. Um, Yeah. I feel like there can be hybrids of the two too. There's, it because like even within a topical framework, you can, you can preach expositionally, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Because so, and that that I think would fall more under the textual, okay, uh, you okay. know, category. Because, because yes, um, and and again, textual, uh, even falling under the category of pastoral. So, like for instance, I'll give you I'll give you a perfect for instance. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully at some point we'll have Pastor Mike Moran back on the podcast at some point. But um, like what happened this past year with the Congregational Church of Eastford. For, for those of you who don't know, um, it was uh, one Sunday morning. Uh, it was in the middle of a thunderstorm. Um, the uh the church the church burned down okay and um it was big news here in town there's only two churches here in our uh in our in our town and uh we're really really close to them obviously we've had pastor mike on our podcast before and uh, i love pastor mike he's a great guy 
And, uh, and so we have a lot of, you know, a lot of connection there. And so that Sunday morning, no, I, I was going through a, a series, uh, as I usually do expository series, but I knew that my people didn't need what I was going to be giving them. And so what do you got to do? Okay, pastorally, okay, I take a text to Scripture. I remember I preached on, uh, I switched gears from what I was going to do, and I was preaching on Psalm 137, 138. And, um, and that's what they needed that day. Uh, and, um, and I know it was appreciated and, and whatnot, but that pastoral preaching is, is a subcategory underneath of textual preaching, because again, I exposed the text, but at the same time, I had a point to it. My point mm-hmm. was, is to bring comfort to my people <clears throat> and be able to help them, um, you know, during that time. So I think that, I think like, just like you said, I think that preaching, all these categories of preaching kind of meld together at some point or, or another. And, yeah. um, and so uh, if you're going to be a, 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 you know, a preacher of God's word, I would, I would argue. Yeah. Why, why, in your opinion, and I, I think I know your opinion here, but I just wanted to just kind of clarify it a little bit. I mean, you said that um, sometimes you need to preach on something that your people need to hear. Right. Um, <clears throat> but overall, you're an expositional guy. Absolutely. Um, why, why is that? Well, I think a couple different things is that God's Word, um, well, I'm going to back up the truck, uh, you know, a little bit, is, is number one, I, I find it to be easier. That's first and foremost, because I'm a pretty lazy guy. And, uh, and, <laughs> not the uh, answer I was expecting. <laughs> well, well, no, no, I mean, I'm dead serious. I, yeah, I think yeah. I, I'm not, and when I say lazy, it's, it, that's not what I mean, but I mean, I think that, I think it's more... And by easier, we don't mean less effort. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, what I mean by that <laughs> yeah. is, is I'm not as creative. Right. Easier in the sense that it's right there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I... It's God's Word. It's know? amazing to me how some topical, primarily topical preachers, the subject matter that they can come up with, um, I yeah. am amazed. I remember one time a few years back, uh, I was I was clicking through, uh, you know, sermons online or whatever, and uh, there was one guy that I knew who, uh, who did a series on adulting. That was his whole series as adulting, hmm. and... Uh, and you know he did a you know eight week series on what it means to be an adult and was you know, again obviously t- topical and uh, was every know, point like alliterated and like I didn't listen to it to be honest <laughs> oh really oh, okay. <laughs> I just saw the t- sermon title I knew it was and I'm like ah <laughs> uh, uh, man that's creative um, you know and then you have other guys who are like you know which which I think and we can talk about this a little bit more which kind of whatever is. Um, you know, it's a form of topical preaching is like, they'll do like series, like, uh, like sermons about movies. And wow. you, you know what I'm saying? I don't you know. And they'll be like, Oh, well, you know, Lord of the Rings, let's try and find the spiritual matters in Lord of the Rings and then bring in the scripture, um, to try and prove the point. Yeah. And, um, but, <clears throat> uh, but all that if I think falls under the umbrella of topical preaching. And to me, um, first and foremost, I'm not that creative. Number two, I don't think it's my job to be creative, okay? My job, as far as the Scripture is concerned, as I see, what is the job of a pastor? What do my people need? Well, God, God's Word tells me to preach the Word, be in, in season and out of season. Second Timothy chapter 3 and, um, and chapter 4 goes over all of that. Yeah. And, uh, and so the primary, the primary thing that I'm supposed to be doing when I'm standing behind the pulpit is exposing, preaching the Word, not preaching my opinion, not preaching the... You know, what, you know the the whims of the day, but preaching God's word. So I think that the text itself tells us how to preach primarily, mm. and and so I think you know. So it's it's really multifaceted, but I think that creativity. Um, you know, I'm not that creative, um, and so I think that uh, just picking a book of <clears throat> scripture and saying, okay, for the next many months, years, however long I'm going to do it, I'm going to be in this text of scripture. And it brings structure, I think, to the church. I think that it brings... That's um, an important point, actually. Yeah, go ahead. The structure. No, right. no that was just an, an addition yeah. to what you're saying. Continue. Mm. It brings structure to the church. I think it brings stability yeah. to the church. Um, there's also pastoral matters uh, that kind of come as a result of expository preaching. Mm. Um, like, for instance, when you're constantly preaching topically, all right, um, and you're just going from text to text every single Sunday. Like, okay, one week I'm in Ephesians, the next week I'm in Numbers, next week I'm over here in Nehemiah, 
you know, uh, throw a mica in there. Yeah, mica or you know, One of these little. Yeah, yeah, like that guy with the with the what's, salt, the salt. You know what I mean? That's yeah. <laughs> yeah Sprinkle in some right, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, Jeremiah over here and a little bit of Luke. Right, yeah. but 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 there's always the danger, like, and people think <clears throat> this anyway, like of the pastor, especially in a small church like ours, like like the pastor's preaching at you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, like okay. he's he's uh, like he's making an application toward you in particular, which is which is you know it happens okay it happens behind, you know behind the pulpit guys do that and um it's much more easy uh and certainly we need to address matters in the life of the church don't get me wrong but uh but it's much more easy to conclude that oh pastor had a run in with me this week and therefore in this week he's talking about yeah. uh why the, uh, based on me yeah here or, we go. Well, why you shouldn't be a jerk you know what i mean here <laughs> let's 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 go to here that's the topic for the day right <laughs> uh whereas like expository preaching is beautiful because it's like well all right if it applies to you, I wasn't thinking about anybody in particular, really, when I'm going. I was just thinking about bringing you the text. Yeah, let God do the talking. Let God do the talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. exposing what God has to say. Have yeah. you ever found that? Uh, I'm sure you have in, right. in the many years you've been preaching that yeah. the you're going through a book. I know you've done several of them. Um, have you ever come across a week where the sermon that you prepared expositionally, yeah. like, really kind of did apply to something that happened that week oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah in the life of the church like, and, oh, and, and, okay and, god and, i see what you're doing there you know well a lot of times it's it's unknown and that's the beauty part about expository right. preaching too is that um yeah i mean i definitely had it where it definitely applies to the life of the church like for instance um i remember one time i was preaching through i think it was hebrews uh Hebrews are one of them, and this it was been a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, and it was there was one particular sermon about like unity. It may have even been chapter ten when we're talking about um, you know church member or um, church attendance and you know encouraging each other all the more as we see the day approaching. Yeah, but it was on the same day as our business meeting, and it was a particularly. I mean, our business meetings have been pretty good as a church overarchingly. Sure, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. But it was at a particularly um, kind of. I, I would say more, you know, volatile, not volatile, but I mean, it could be a potentially volatile time. Uh, there was issues that we were voting on and th- different things and, um, and, you know, preaching on unity in the body and preaching on loving one another. Um, I think that that really did do a work during the business meeting itself to kind of quell any issues that arose. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, as I said before, I think that there's been many times where, um, you know, I, you know, I preach the sermon, and I have no clue how it is affecting the lives of the individuals. But mm. then the Lord will give you uh, just through circumstance, like afterwards, like afterwards, like yeah. oh, that really applied to somebody. Like for instance, I remember um, I was preaching through uh, years ago. I was preaching through First Corinthians, mm. and it was a tough text. We were talking about church discipline. Uh, we were talking about uh, you know, obviously that that's a rough book of scripture, and. We don't like to talk about things like excommunication. We don't like to talk about yeah, sin that's tough. and, and um, keeping, keeping people accountable. Right, and um, who likes to be held accountable? Right. Well, no one likes that. <laughs> yeah. Especially the I guy. Why, be- I don't know why I'm looking at Matt when I say that. I know, that. especially the what guy behind the monitor over there. What did yeah. I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> he feels attacked. Again, yeah, he's just a feeling little. attacked over there. You know, I mean, getting yeah. all of his names wrong. You know, Carl <laughs> Winslow, but the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt Schmauerd, yeah, over here. yeah, yeah. Schmauerd, you know, yeah. I Sorry. work late. Thank yeah, you. that's right. Yes, <laughs> I get home at eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, you know, but yeah, you know, but uh, thanks for anyways. being here, brother. Yeah, You're hey welcome. man, I'm glad. You yes, know, but I'm happy uh, to be here. <laughs> I was gonna say is to be, you know, I I don't know why Carl Weathers keeps coming yeah, to my right. mind yeah. as well. You know, Carl, anyway, which, Weathers. Carl Weathers is great. But anyway, that's a whole d- different topic. But Apollo. Apollo. And uh and he, he was he was also in Mandalorian, which was great. Uh, but anyway, was. Yeah, he was. He was yeah. he did great in that in that uh he was one of my favorite characters. But anyway, um, moving back. Yeah, yeah moving yeah. back, yeah. Um so uh, you know, so I was preaching through First Corinthians and um somebody come up to me afterwards and uh you know they were they were struggling with some sin. And so they uh, so they felt that they felt that uh Basically, the, the Holy Spirit, yes, uh, convicting them. Oh, because of what you preached that day, right? Yeah, and it was That's interesting. Yeah, it was amazing. And uh, the, these particular people, like the Word of God, did through through those messages that I was really, by the way, nervous to preach because, again, um, at that particular time in our church's life, I think that um, you know, uh, you know, you know I, I, I mean, our church has been faithful in practicing church discipline. I, I think over the years. 
um, which We've is, made which our is share good. of mistakes. We've made our share of mistakes, but I think that, which we all do, and that's yeah. part of the life of the church. Sure. Yeah. But I think that... Um, yeah, that's every church, by the way. You know, that's not just, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's not but, a unique uh, issue, yeah. But I think that uh, at that particular time, I was... I, you know, I was nervous about preaching on that particular subject, mm. but it was. But mm. I, I remember that being one of those those sermons that it was really, whatever to preach on. But um, but God did an amazing work, and those folks are uh, super strong members of our church now, and they uh, some of the godliest people that I know. And uh, I really believe that it was due to the power of the expositional preaching of the text of Scripture, not anything to do with me, mm, but mm. the Word of God, which is in a whole nother subject, brother. That that I um, another reason why I I stick to expository preachings because, listen, um, <laughs> listen, you you all who listen to the podcast, you, you you know us and and whatnot. You you obviously want our opinion on different things. That's part of the podcast and whatnot. But when it comes to the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Um, my opinion doesn't matter, okay, as far as I'm concerned. You're not coming to church to hear from Tim Howard, all right? You come to Gospelicious Radio to hear from <laughs> Adam and Tim and, and Matt over here, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. but uh, but the pulpit is a different ball game altogether. It, the whole purpose of the pulpit is to hear from God. Yeah. And so, the pulpit's different. Yes. It's different. It, it, it should be. Yeah. And, and uh, unfortunately, though, I mean, like we, and, it, you know, when we start making it about us and, Preachers do that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, it uh, you know you might draw crowds. You might um, you know you you might become a cult of personality. Um, mm. uh, That's interesting. You know, way it's, to put it. Yeah, yeah, it it, uh, it people might come to hear you preach, but um, mm. you know because of your eloquence or because of any of these other things, and right. so it very easily could get get uh, the focus off, but I think that I think that expository preaching helps to bring balance to that because what you're coming to hear today, the expectation when you have an expository pastor is that I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to hear from the text of Scripture. He's not going to insert a ton of his own anecdotes. He's not yeah. going to insert a ton of his own uh, personal opinions unless the text warrants it. Like this past Sunday, I'm preaching through Revelation. The, listen, if you listen to my sermon on Revelation 8, 6 to 13, a lot of that's my opinion, okay? And I made that very, very clear throughout it. And Yeah, uh, you prefaced it at the beginning with right. that. Right, yeah. and it's because— The text is what it is. It, it's there. It's right there. It's—yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. And, <laughs> and what a confusing text of Scripture, too. I yeah. mean, and this Sunday is yeah. going to be even worse, to be honest with you. Not even worse, but it's, it's going to be uh, one of those—because Revelation is— I mean, it's it's uh, prophetic, and yeah. all prophecies, Trump, trumpets. yeah, trumpets, and what is this symbol? Like this yeah. this coming Sunday, we're going to talk about the, uh, uh, the, the, the these creatures that have uh, tails like scorpions, and that sting, and and when they sting, that they don't cause death, but they make the people that they sting cry out for death, and then we're going to be talking about Apollyon. Uh, and angels and all of this other stuff and it's it's it, like how do you yeah how do you how do you not preface that with your own opinion okay so you have a different text of scripture whereas if I was preaching through Ephesians Ephesians is a different ball game all right because it's very very clear it's a epistle it's mm -hmm. a letter it was written by Paul and so the intention should be okay well w w you know what did the Apostle Paul and why did he write this um, who was he writing to originally and how does it apply to me you know what I mean and um yeah the literary yeah. context is right. very important and right. the historical i mean right. literary historical is very two very important contexts i mean you got something right. like historical narrative too right something like genesis or exodus you know right um yeah. you know i i've always wanted to uh, well i think i i i might know the answer but i wanted to run this by you yep. just for the benefit of our listeners too um is the i guess the the likelihood of making a mistake in your preparation, application, studies, mm. is it higher? Is the percentage of making a mistake higher when you take a topical approach as opposed to expositional approach, or does it depend on the preacher? I, I think it depends on the preacher, um, you know, honestly. Because I, I, I always, but, always feel, sorry to interrupt you, yeah, I, ahead, I, yeah. I, always, I always feel like when you go at it topically, right. You're running a higher risk of misapplication for some reason because you're going around right. looking, cherry picking, doing all these yeah. things. Is there? I always feel like there's more of a chance, or more of a likelihood that you're going to mess up. 
I agree. I agree. I think it depends on the preacher. You might not, I mean, but... it, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've I've seen really really good topical preachers um, who remain textual, who get the, their points directly. I mean, almost right. like an expository sermon. Um, however, um, yeah, I would agree. I mean, you, your likelihood of you messing up if you're going into it looking to for a particular topic mm-hmm. and you're cherry picking this text of scripture over here from that text of scripture. I mean, you, you, listen, you can take any piece of literature, the Bible, you know, whatever, right. and make it say whatever you want if you pull a quote out of context. That's where okay? you run the eisegesis versus exegesis. Exactly. That's <laughs> argument there. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. You know, and uh, exegesis, of course, exegeting the text, pulling the meaning from the text as opposed to eisegesis is putting your meaning on the text itself. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's definitely part of it. And I think hmm. that um, I think that that's the reason why I tend to avoid topical preaching. Yeah. Um, because, you know, again, you can make the text say whatever you want it to say if, mm. if you really want it to, if you pull one text. And that's the reason why if you're going to do more topical and, and there's nothing wrong with doing a topical. I, I want to make that very, sure. very clear. If you, yeah, um, just got to be careful. That's because, right. I mean, like the majority, like for instance, like the majority of like our, our children's, uh, you know, materials or uh, teen materials, a lot of that is going to be topical. Yeah, okay? it is. Yeah. So there's, I, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, it, that, you know, yeah. all forms of topical <laughs> right. preaching and teaching are, yeah. uh, you know, they, they need to be sitting down and knowing every single detail of the text of Scripture and mm-hmm. got to be going verse by verse. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. But you do need to, if you're going to be topical, is you need to be deriving whatever that topic is from the Bible itself. So and and making sure that that was the point of mm. uh, why it was originally written, mm. and um, and so like for instance, if you're going to do a class, let's let's uh, say on parenting, all right, um, or husbands and wives, all right. Well, what are some texts of scripture that you're going to go to immediately? I mean, are you going to go to you know? I mean, are you going to go to the middle of First uh, Samuel to try and prove your point with okay. one random verse? No, you know, of course Probably you're going to go to Ephesians. You're going to go to Ephesians. Yeah. You're going to go to Ephesians chapter five. Yeah. You're going to go to Colossians chapter three. Sure. Uh, you're going to go to First Peter. You're going to go to some of these other te- that deal with that particular issue. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, it only makes sense. And so, but you know, whereas you know, again, if you know, and that really depends on the topic too, because sure. again, if you're picking a topic. I mean, you could be guilty of picking a topic that in and of itself is unbiblical, um, mm. you know, and um, like, for instance, um, you know, we see this especially, especially, especially with more liberal churches. Okay, they preach too, all right, and more leftist-leaning type churches that um, their point on Sunday morning is not to expose the text of Scripture. Their point is to bring a topic to you, a topic of their choosing. And what is and what is usually that topic? Well, it's usually acceptance of whatever liberal dogma is out there at that particular time. So, yeah, they're taking the Bible. Love is love. Love is love. You know, um, you know, this is the reason why, you know, the rainbow stoles and all of these other things that they wear um, and all of this kind of thing that they're that they're trying to push an agenda as opposed to getting the agenda from the text, the scripture itself. So it's Mm. a form of it's a Mm. form of topical preaching. Uh, that is that is misapplies the text of scripture. Yeah, imposing the agenda versus receiving the agenda from God's word. Exactly. Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. Do you have you ever seen? Uh, or actually, I should ask you this, and this might be a little humbling. So my yeah. apologies in advance. No, if this has happened to you. Yeah, yeah. Have you approached a sermon? I mean, gosh, you've had to have preached. Yeah, lots. At least a thousand sermons at this point. Yeah, at least. Um, what? Has there ever been a time when you preached a sermon and then you realize suddenly after the sermon at any point, oh, I think I may have misinterpreted that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, might, yeah. I might have gotten that wrong. Oh, yeah. I, and I'm feeling that, actually. It's funny enough that you bring it out right now. I mean, it's it, with, with Revelation. I mean, yeah. like, I think every sermon that I preach from Revelation, with the exception of the first few dealing with the... Um, the uh, the seven churches. I mean, the seven mm-hmm. churches are pretty pretty straightforward, but especially when you get into more prophetic stuff. Uh, but then again, I mean, like, look, I mean, you can make mistakes, um, and you and I have uh, throughout the years. Uh, I mean, I'm not perfect, and the uh, you know you can definitely you know either misinterpret a text of scripture, and that's really another point of preaching that you have to be very very careful on. Is I think maybe where I've made the biggest mistakes has been with application, and 
I, I think that how we apply the text to Scripture, we need to be super careful because a lot of times it's it's it can be extremely subjective. It can be extremely subjective how you apply that. Like, for instance, okay, mm. uh, I was a little nervous. I'll just pick my one from this past Sunday, okay, because it's fresh on my mind. Um, when you get to Revelation chapter 8, verse 13, and you come to the end of the text of Scripture, uh, the end of that that. And that, that text, yeah. yeah, or that chapter, sorry. that chapter, yeah. and you come there, and there's a verse there about the eagle mm. flying overhead, and uh, let me just see if I can bring that up really quick, so that I'm not. Well, you know what? I got my Bible sitting right here, so why don't I just bring it up right here instead of typing it in? So you have Revelation chapter eight, verse thirteen, just to give us a little. We're here at the um, seventh seal and the first four trumpets being uh, blasted as a result of the seventh seal, and so we have all of these amazing, terrifying events that happen as a result of the first, second, third, fourth trumpet. And then at the end of the chapter, you have in verse 13, he says this, Then I looked, and I heard an eagle, which if you have a King James Version, that's going to say angel, but I think it's eagle. Uh, I heard an eagle crying out with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead, Woe, 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 to those who dwell on the earth at the blast of the other trumpet that the three angels are about to blow. So the application that I made at the end was that we are kind of like the eagle, and we are to be crying out indiscriminately, um, flying overhead safe and sound. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, the wrath of God is not going to be poured out upon us. It's, it's poured out upon the world, and ultimately in, in hell later on, as we see in this text of Scripture. And so, but I made the application that we're kind of like that angel. We're to be messengers out there crying out and sharing the gospel with others. Now, Looking at the text of Scripture here, that's not the intent of verse 13, okay? I, I impose that on the text, hmm. um, because the point of this is not necessarily evangelism. I think that that's one application that you can take from it. I think it's an important one. Uh, do I stand upon it? Yeah, I think it's a good lesson that we can learn. But when you get down to brass tacks about it, if I was to analyze my own sermon right now, and I really wanted to be super critical about it, I would say that uh, you don't get that from the text. You put you put that there. And so not criticizing my sermons or whatever, yeah. but... Uh, well, this sometimes is, this it's healthy to look back and do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, was it a bad application? No, I think it was a great application. I think that, you know, I mean, at the end of the sermon, I mean, basically get out there and share the gospel. That's what it is. It's all stuff that we should be doing. But mm -hmm. um, but I bring that up because it's, it's, it's because it's very, very important that we be very, very careful with our applications from the text of Scripture. Now, the, the application that I drew from there is fine, it's biblical, it's good. You don't get it from the text itself, but it's good because we get it from other places in the text and the overarching context of Revelation, because the whole idea is, is repent and believe in Jesus before it's too late. Right. So I, I'm getting it from the text of Scripture. But where the problem would come is if I was to make some other applied application from somewhere else. If I was to take that same verse and I was to make an application from, say, okay, the eagle crying overhead with a loud voice, whoa, 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 uh, to those who dwell on the earth at the blast of the other trumpet that the other three angels are about to blow, and made some other kind of crazy application that that that, that doesn't apply at all to the— The eagle is like Jesus, who like, said, woe to the Pharisees. Right, yeah. And, you know, and yeah, just you like know, to, yeah. Just like connecting it just because the word just is the same. Just because the word is the yeah, same or yeah, something yeah. like that. Now, is it textual? Yeah, yeah. but it, is it derived— so my point is, I right. guess this is where I'm going with it. Is the eagle that you, is Jesus. The eagle is Jesus. You yeah, know, I mean, and, yeah. and I, and of course, I had to make the, the call back because, and the reason, again, if you listen to that sermon, it's the reason why I, uh, I think it's evil. There is, well, it's, it's twofold, because uh, I do believe that the earlier manuscripts it says eagle, um, mm -hmm. but also because I like talking animals. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, what I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, the talking donkey and, uh, and all of that throughout yeah. the text of scripture, but also Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Lord of the Rings. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, that's right, the, the talking eagles, yeah. Yes. What was the, yeah, I, I was trying to think, I should know my Lord of the Rings lore, it's like... I have to admit, yeah. when, when you when you read verse 13, yeah. I, I thought, because this is Revelation, mm. that image of Mount Doom came into my head. Yeah. With Mount Doom and the eagles. <laughs> that's good, yeah. Take, taking them at the at the end, <laughs> you know. That's true, you, you know. know. And uh, Glenn Demir or whatever his name was, that was yeah. the. Um, and it's funny if you read Lord of the Rings. We should do a we should do a uh, episode on Lord of the Rings. I could talk all day on Lord of the Rings, but um, the the eagles do talk. 
in yes, in yes, the they, do. uh, they they do you don't see that in the uh, in the Peter Jackson uh, right. movies, but uh, but they do talk. Their budget was already huge. Yeah, it was already yeah <laughs> <laughs> had to drop something <laughs> had to drop something there, and they do a good but, job in the in the BBC dramatization with that. No, do they? Yeah. 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 Um, cool. But uh, but yeah, no. But I mean, the point the point of, the yeah. point is is that. E- you got to be super duper careful in your application from a text. And I think that that's especially true when you go through a book like Revelation. The applications from other from other texts of scripture like I like I mentioned from like Paul's writings or even the gospels. I mean, the application is right there. Yeah. I mean, like for instance, it's when you teach, like when you teach on the sermon on the mount, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and Jesus says, "Blessed are the peacemakers." You know, what is the application? I mean, there's a very clear application there. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's you should try and live in peace with others. I mean, it's, that's it. You know, I mean, what other application are you going to make from that text of scripture? I mean, it's there. Whereas, you know, and then in and then um, you know, and I think too, we have to be careful too because I, I think where it gets difficult is in prophecy. But also, I think that we can uh, we can be guilty of uh, of that with uh, uh, um, the uh, Sorry, I was getting a phone call from somebody. The, the pastor life never stops, but uh, but I think we need to be careful of that with narrative. Are, do you need to take it? No, 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 no. It's all good. Um, but uh, the the we need to be careful of that with with narrative, especially because um, uh, like, and what I mean by narrative is like stories throughout uh, you know you know the Old Testament or the the life of Jesus and stuff like that, and applications that we should make from the text of Scripture. Um, that shouldn't be made. Uh, there's an old saying amongst preachers that uh, narrative is not normative, and meaning this is that we should be very careful how we apply the narratives mm-hmm. of the text of Scripture. Like, for instance, um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say I, I may, I may actually kind of made a point about that in Sunday school. Yeah, um, and you know we were talking about gender, mm-hmm. se- human sexuality, and marriage, right. and all these things. And I said, you know, when you look back. Uh, you have, have you read have you read the book that we're going oh, over? Yeah. Okay, oh yeah okay so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you, you so the authors go back to Genesis 1 and 2 as sort of the framework for sexuality and marriage right right uh, before the fall yeah uh, that's the original design right yep um because when you look in the old testament and you look at marriage and you you you're looking for the concept of marriage in the old testament what do you see some of the greatest heroes of the old testament yeah, yeah. were polygamists <laughs> yes that's a great point yeah but did you ever see that celebrated or touted or Never. referenced as like the best thing ever? No. In fact, you mm. always saw it as problematic. Oh yeah. You always saw it as causing issues and really causing these men to fail in spectacular ways. Right. I mean, you look at Solomon. He had seven hundred wives and three hundred concubines. He had a thousand women. Right. I know. It's crazy and um, sexually involved with him. I know. Yeah. And it's like it's crazy. And, I mean, when um, you think about that, that's wild. That is crazy. I mean, and and really in that same verse, I think it's First Kings eleven three. I want to say right. I could be wrong. I yeah. think it's First Kings. Yeah. First yeah, Kings yeah, eleven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might be for yeah. Anyway, uh, it it literally in that same verse when it says seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines, the second half of that verse said, and they led his heart astray. Right, right, and they it, led him away from the well, Lord. So, so the point is, is that what we're supposed to see from that is that you know, like, look, this, y- yeah, you know, it happened. There's, there's much polygamy. It right. happened, but was that the, <laughs> is that the application that is, we should take? Is from the it? application that you should be a polygamist too? Yeah, you no, know? no, no, no. It's like no, actually, do you see the heartache that that caused? Do you see right. the problems that that caused? Yeah, it's, I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, it's a uh, verse four. It says, "For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart." After That's other gods, and yep. his heart was not wholly true to the Lord as God. Yeah. Right, there right. You go. There you go. So you see the problem that caused, right? So right. just because, like you said, just because it's in the narrative doesn't make it normative. It's not a prescription to what we should do today. Right. Absolutely. Uh, it's not prescriptive as far as there's uh, context, and there's yeah. You have to like understand the point of 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 why the writer wrote that. It's to illustrate the point that no, his polygamy was a great thorn for him. Right. Um, at the time, I'm sure he thought this is great. I know, you know all these women. I know, yeah. Well, well, that's the Amazing. thing. It's like, well, but again, it's but, but the application there, of course. I mean, it does it does it defend a, a polygamist or a, no. or a fornication at all? I mean, no. and also you have to another key too to understanding context too is is uh, you know balancing scripture against scripture, and that's a that's a key that you need to. This is where expository preaching that was is one so, of the first points so, yeah. of that Sunday school class too, by the way. Right, amen. <laughs> which was. by the way, which by the way, I'm so sad that I I have to miss it because I'm doing a membership class at the same time, and as a matter of fact, the people in my membership class are sad 
because they want to be in, in in on that class. And so, yeah, I'm going to have to move quick through it. I might even change the time so that they can be a part of it. But, um, <laughs> but no, but I think that that, that, that class yeah. is, is a classic example of what we're talking about here is the idea of, um, you know, like you say, you can make the scripture if you pull, you right. know, the, the, the instance of Solomon or Abraham for that matter. I mean, like, you know, Isaac and uh, and, and Jacob, like, look at J Jacob is like one of my most hated characters in the Bible. Jacob was a schemer. He was a schemer, but like, look at, look at the guy. It's like, you know, he's like with, he's with, you know, Rachel and then he's with this one over here yeah. and then he's, um, you yeah. know, and then he's with the, another one and another one and another one. And it's like, and then, and then do you see the, the, the issues that that creates to mm -hmm. all of the, the infighting with Joseph and all of his brothers and they hate him because he's, you know, and it's like, so is, does the Bible ever, ever, uh, condone sexual immorality? And that is sexual immorality. Never, yeah. never, not once. And so getting back to preaching, you know, uh, you know yeah, you could derive an application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and others have like, Joseph Smith, for instance, okay? He was a Bible teacher, too, uh, head of the Mormons. And what was his application from texts like that? Well, yeah, you could be a polygamist. I mean, it's very, very clear in the text of Scripture. And, uh, you know, you see these examples, but narrative is not normative. Right. And, um, and, and well, I was, Solomon was wise, though. He was wise. He was, all, he was wise. He had all these wives. He must have been wise to do that. Right. <laughs> but the problem is, again, balancing Scripture against Scripture. Devil's, devil's advocate. De devil's advocate. It's yeah. like... Well, a couple different things is that the scripture also is very, very clear to point out his flaws. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was, I believe, the second wisest man that ever walked this planet. And that's the entire point is because there was one wiser. There was a greater Solomon. His name is Jesus Christ. And he never committed sexual immorality, not once. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so it, that was actually one of his flaws, Solomon's. Uh, and the thing that ultimately led to his down, downfall. Major, major flaw. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but I would say the same thing applies not just to, in the case of sexual immorality, but I would say it also applies, uh, narrative is not normative to, like, our charismatic brethren. Um, sure. And, and I think that they, I think our more charismatic brethren, I, and I do call them brethren, okay, because I don't count them, many of them, like, um, you know, like a Mormon or anything like that. I think that they can cross the line quite a bit. But what they'll do is that they'll go to passages like Acts and other places where it has these fantastic, miraculous events that happen, healings and speaking in tongues, and they misapply it based upon the narrative, okay? And and when, at the same time, they don't balance that out with the rest of the text of Scripture, which very, very clearly speaks of these sign gifts starting to degrade over time, and and also uh, a complete reliance by the church on the Word of God. Like, for instance, balancing Scripture. Yeah, Paul healed people. Paul very clearly performed miracles. He did, um, he did um, uh, you know, amazing, amazing things that we read of in the text of Scripture. Um, however, in his final book, balancing that out, in his final book that he wrote, 2 Timothy— uh, Timothy is having, uh, you know, stomach issues. And what does he say, what does he tell him to, to do? He tells him to take medicine for, he takes, tells him to take a little wine for his stomach's sake. Right. And, um, why didn't Paul just heal him from a distance? He did it before he mm. sent people. If you read the book of Acts, he sent them handkerchiefs and, and that he had, you know, whatever blessed or whatever, and that it healed people. You know what I mean? Why didn't Paul do that from prison? Why didn't he just, you know, well, it's because we see scripture against scripture balancing the narrative mm. That it was not normative, meaning that meaning that we you you, know, you get what I'm saying. So, yeah. and I would say that that's one of the biggest flaws that I see in charismaticism today is that they that they rely so heavily upon the narrative. Another narrative that they that they uh, will jump on is, for instance, the last few uh, verses of the book of uh, Mark, for instance. Mm. And and uh, so yeah, go go to uh, the last chapter. I believe it's Mark. Um. um Oh, man, I got it right here. Sorry. I'm, I'm in Luke over here. Mark. Um, <laughs> a different guy. A different guy. So uh, 16. Yeah, Mark yeah. 16, right? So, like, a couple different things. And this is where I think that balancing not just the narrative, but also the context of the, the Scripture itself um, and understanding just a little bit about the manuscript history, I think, is, is, is important as well, which I'm, by the way, going through on Wednesday nights as well is picking up in verse 9, it says, Now when he rose early on the next day of the week, he, Jesus, appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. See where the charismaticism is, is going here so mm -hmm. far? Mm -hmm. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. 
but when they heard that he was uh, alive and had been and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. Uh, verse 12, after these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe it. Afterwards, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed the, uh, those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel of the whole creation, right? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, here's the kicker, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will do what? They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. You all hear about the snake handlers, right? Hmm. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. And then he, then he goes on from there. And now, this is one of the key charismatic texts. Okay, it's a narrative, but there's a few problems with it. Number one, as we said, narrative is not normative. So in the context, he is speaking to his disciples, okay? so And the disciples did do all of these different things, of course. But uh, the other thing is, and this is where we have to balance out a little bit of understanding about the context of particular passages, is that you understand if you back up the truck just before verse 9, what does it say in your ESV? There should be a little notation there, just before verse 9 in, in yeah. chapter 16. What does it Some say? Some of the earliest manuscripts do not include verses 9 through 20. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I agree with that. I don't think that 9 through 20 should be in the Bible, to be honest with you. Okay? I, I, I think that it was inserted later, and that's a whole topic of discussion for a different— mm -hmm. But what that means is that whether these verses should or should not be in the text of Scripture, um, because they're questionable, can you base your entire theology— on a verse of scripture that should or, or could not actually be a part of the text. And, and that's been my main uh, argumentation, I think, whenever I deal with people who believe in it still, like, we'll use Mark chapter 16 uh, to be able to apply that, well, I should be able to cast out demons. Well, because Jesus said that I would cast out demons. Well, it might no. not even be there. You yeah. know what I mean? You, 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 you're... Anyway, I'm, yeah. I'm, I know I'm going off, yeah. but we have to we have to be careful. That's 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 the thing. Be careful. That is uh, short but profound advice, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, we have to be super super duper careful, and um, I think that um, especially when we are teaching and preaching God's word, that you study, 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 um, strive to expose. Um, Try, strive to expose the context. You know what I mean? What? Yeah. What, are you, what are you giving me? He gave me the cue. Yeah. yeah. The cue. I told him before, give me a cue when it's time to wrap. Oh, okay. You guys had like a secret sign over here. You're it like, did. yeah. And, and as a yeah. matter of fact, I do have to run myself because I'm. And then he my, immediately uh, called it out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm over here. Matt's try over here. He's got, just to let you know, bring bring yourself up on the screen for a second. This was, this was the cue that I just got subtly. And, yeah, I, they, and, I, and I went like this. <laughs> if you're looking at me, I went like this. Yeah. <laughs> very, very subtly. Yeah. yeah. It would have been seamless if uh, you didn't just call I it know. Out well, there, what can but, I say? Know. I'm over here and What's I. What's that? Uh, What's yeah. that, huh? What's the, what I are you know. doing over there? What are you What's doing? That? What are you doing? You know, but. Well, normally I'm, you know, messing around over here. So yeah, no, I, I was wondering, understand. but the, uh, but nah, it's, it's one of those things. But I think we all get the point. So. Matt, got any thoughts? Uh, no, I, I, I'm blanking now because he distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I was going to just, um, I, I did a little. Uh, background before today, and yeah. I, I was just gonna say, um, like John Calvin has a has a good point. Uh, he said the first business of the Christian minister is to feed the sheep. It is not high sounding words or literary skill or oratorical power which is required, but feeding the sheep. Yeah, hmm. and I yeah. think that's like well said. your main point. Yeah, definitely is, and that's I believe what expository preaching does. Hmm. It feeds the sheep. Amen. 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 Well, that sounds like a bow. That sounds like a pretty good bow for the day. John yeah. Calvin with the bow. I know. Co coming in at the last second yeah. with the bow there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's Very good. Nice. Yeah. So it, it's it's an interesting topic, right? Because I feel like there's it's multifaceted. Um, but the bottom line is we have to be very careful with the pulpit. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I I I can remember just a quick story here. I know this is post bow, but it's all right. Um, I have two bows. I remember I have two bows. Yeah. Two bows. It's a fancier, fancier yeah. gift. Yeah. Um, I remember when I when I first preached for the or when I preached for the first time. 
Um, I remember looking back and I was like, there were a couple verses I used and I'm like, I, I don't think that was quite right. Mm. I remember thinking that. Right. I'm like, I, I think I, it, it wasn't disastrous. Right. But I was like, I don't know if that was the right verse for that. Mm. And I remember thinking I was really disappointed. And, um, overall, I think that it, it got, it got, um, people, people seem to, you know, get stuff, get, they, they seem to learn from it. Amen. Um, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic, but, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. But I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, it just reminded me like, I, I, I can't perfectly do this. Right. And I don't know if that's really the point of doing it mm. to be perfect at it. Oh no. You know what I mean? That's a great like, point. We, we, we put, we put a lot of emphasis on the pulpit, which we should, by the way. Right. There is a burden to doing that, especially every week like you do. Man. Yeah. I, um, it's, it's, it's wild. But um, in the few instances where, where I've been very, very blessed to do it, um, I keep having to, re- to remind myself like, yeah, this is important. You should try to get mm. this as, as, as right as possible. Amen. But understand that it's, you're, you're, you're ultimately resting on the power of God to do it through you. Not, yes. Not trying to impress God or to to earn any no. uh, favor with your works or to do anything like that. Right. Um, there is a seriousness to it, and you should take it seriously. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you're not perfect. Well, and that's the thing. Is I, I think we're that We're sinners if, trying to preach a perfect word. That's right. There's it's, you know? it's, it's preaching, and you hit the nail on the head, and I think that it's a great way to end it, is that if there's... One thing that preaching should do to you is it should humble you. Ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Pre- preaching, <laughs> one old preacher used to say that, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, is, is, uh, it's, it's like watching a, a naked man dying in front of you. Um, and just the idea, not, I know that that's not something that you want to picture, but, but, that's uh, yeah, that's but, but, but it's, but like you're bearing your, your soul, you're yeah. bearing it all, um, in front of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not oftentimes pretty, um, you know, it's not the most eloquent, right. it's not the most, uh, you know, it, it's not meant to be either mm-hmm. because it's not about us. It's about dying to self and, Amen. and, and that Christ would be big, not me. And so if preaching is elevating your ego, uh, you're, you're doing, doing it wrong. wrong. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. So good conversation. Thank Amen. you. Guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, uh, all, all you guys, for watching Amen. and listening. This has been Gospelicious Radio, episode seventy-four. Uh, find us on YouTube. Find us on Sermon Audio. Sermon Audio, of course, is the semi-exclusive home of Gospelicious Radio. Amen. You can find everything there. Uh, connect with us. Engage with us. Um, all the links you need to do so are uh, on our link tree. Our, our link tree link, of course, is in the description below. Uh, you can uh, link that to all of our socials are on there. Our email is on there, gospeliciousradio at gmail.com. Send us your questions, your comments, your insults, all those things. Amen. Uh, we promise not to take them personally unless... I will. Un- unless they're, yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty, I know, pretty, Matt, 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 will. Matt, Matt will take them personally. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Th- thank you guys for, for, for listening and, sh- and, and uh, sharing with your friends and... Uh, yeah, come back again next week, will you? That's right, and and most importantly, and I'm gonna I'm gonna steal your thunder here. We need to share the gospelicious word. Beepo, beepo. <laughs> exactly. Amen, exactly. amen, brother. Amen. So, for Pastor Tim, happy painting and God bless, my friends. For producer Matt, here we go. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> I'm Adam. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. All guys. right. God bless you guys. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>